In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Today we're looking at uh, still ch uh, chapter 1, verse 14 of uh, the book of John, but we're focusing in and, and zooming in on the word and dwelt among us. First off, I want to look at the original Greek. Um, the word dwelling and among really pale in comparison to what St. John was saying and what he wrote. And the word he wrote, I'm going to say it in Greek, and I'm using the ancient Greek pronunciation, so for any modern Greeks, please forgive me. Um, that's all I studied, so. It, it, it says, Kai eskenosen en hemen. Eskenosen, this word, the root word for that is the word for tabernacle. So the translation is actually that that the word became flesh and tabernacled he he made a tabernacle now the the last part is en haman which can mean among us but primarily means in us and you'll find even in the church fathers that they refer to it as in us uh, specifically uh, saint cyril of alexandria talks about how wonderful it is that he came in us um, and tabernacled in us. So this 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 concept of of the tabernacle has been there from the beginning. This idea or this reality of God wanting to 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 have a place with us in us. What's beautiful is that we now call it a church or a temple. We know that Saint Paul calls us that we and says that we are the temples of God because the Holy Spirit indwells us. But here we see that the Word, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Logos of the Father, became flesh and he tabernacled in us. And the implications of that are so beautiful. First of all, he 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 pitched his tent. He said, I am coming and making my home in you we know later i believe it's in chapter 15 he says anyone who loves me and will keep my commandment and me and my father will come and make our home in him this is the desire of the logos this is the desire of god to come and make his home in us make us into his tabernacle his residing place we know that the tabernacle was um, you know, very specifically and magnificently made by Moses, given directions to Moses on how to build the tabernacle of meeting, eventually turned into the temple um, and, and uh, of Solomon. And we see that this word temple or tabernacle is ultimately used in the book of Revelation. And it's in 21, I believe, Revelation 21, where he says, and there is no temple there for God is its temple. So though he comes and makes a temple out of us, he comes and lives in us, makes his home in us, makes his tabernacle in us, ultimately we shall be in him and he shall be our tabernacle. He shall be our temple. Ultimately, he is our home. So this beauty of the desire of the Logos, our, our logic, our reason for being is to be the tabernacle of God. And not just that, but to be in him as our tabernacle. We are to be his home and he is our home. He is the one in whom we find peace and joy. He is the one that we find our safety our sense of being our sense of of knowing who we are and who he is it is by being in him you know um when uh when when i got married i, I got a sense of this because so often um you know you'd think that that home is this brick and mortar place that you live in but I discovered when I got married that it didn't matter where we traveled and how long we traveled for. As long as I was, I was with m my wife, I, I was home. You know, and she has this 
gift of of making us feel at home so wherever she is 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 home now this is uh, uh you know multiplied by a bazillion uh, that's not even a word but it should be multiplied by a bazillion uh, our feeling towards god where he is is our home and as long as he makes his home in us we're fine there's nothing that can separate us from the love of Christ. And so the word became flesh and tabernacled in us. Also, St. Cyril of Alexandria points out how, again, the same theme that because he dwelt or tabernacled in us, here he sees it as well and, and speaks of it as our common nature. He dwelt in our common humanity. And and as Adam um, was you know, the the first Adam brought down all of humanity by his sin. And we shared that humanity with Adam. So Christ, when he came, enriched that humanity, brought it back to its original meaning. He even references where he says, um, he quotes, the Lord says to, to the people, he says, I said, you are gods and all of you sons of the Most High. He, he says that, that because God came and dwelt among us and tabernacled in our common human nature, then we are elevated to what and who he is. So this, um, again, this theme of him becoming the second or the last Adam in whom we all now find our common nature with him. Therefore, sin has no power over us. Death has no power over us because we now share a common humanity with Christ. Um, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Finally, the last movement in this way is that the Lord chose the lowest place. When he came and he dwelt among us, he really dwelt among us. He didn't. He 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 was born in a manger, took on flesh, um, took on a body that grew slowly, and so on. And so we too must dwell in our limitations and live among each other without any snobbiness, without any sense of uh, entitlement, but rather as the Lord lowered himself, as the Lord emptied himself and dwelt among us, so we ought to also dwell among one another with love and make a church, make a tabernacle uh, with each other as he tabernacled in us. Have a beautiful day.